Okay. We should be there now. We should be face, Facebook Live. As I say, <laughs> people do tend to join as this meeting goes on. Um, but what I'll ask you to do is to just keep yourselves muted until such times as we are praying. And then when we're praying, if you want to pray or if we, um, you're invited to pray, then please feel free to open your mic. But yes, if we can keep the mics closed just while we, um, so we don't have any background noise. But we're going to start off with um, Psalm 10. And it's quite a long verse, or a long psalm. It's about 18 <laughs> verses long. So um, just bear with us. And it kind of be done in two halves as well, as we shall see as we go along. But it starts with, why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak who are caught in the schemes he devises. He boasts about the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. I'll be with you in a sec. Just, that's it. Sorry, I'm just muting people. Um, <laughs> he boasts about his cravings, he blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. His ways are always prosperous. Your laws are rejected by him. He sneers at all his enemies. He says to himself, nothing will ever shake me. He swears no one will ever do me harm. His mouth is full of lies and threats. Sorry, John, I'm just speaking in. Um, his mouth is full of lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near the villages. From ambush he murders the innocent. His eyes watch in secret for his victims. Like a lion in cover, he lies in wait. He lies in wait to catch, catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off his net. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God will never notice. He covers his face and never sees. Arise, Lord, lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the helpless. Why does a wicked man revile God? Why does he say to himself, he won't call me, me to account? But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it, take it in hand. Their victims commend themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked man. Call the evil do doer to account for his wickedness that would never otherwise be found out. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. You, Lord, hear the desires of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. Defending the fatherless and the oppressed so that mere mortals Mere earthly mortals will never strike terror. Father, we thank you for these words, and we can see, Lord, that you are, you are. Uh, this psalm is actually divided up into two sides because at the end of the uh, end of the psalm, Lord, we are praising you. We know, Lord, that you are our Father in heaven. We know, Lord, that you are great. We know, Lord, that you do care for us. And sometimes, Lord, it seems as though the wicked are, are getting away with things. But you care for us, Lord. You look after us, Lord. And there are reasons for the, the way things happen. We know you. we are part of your plan, Lord. You are our Father in heaven and you have plans for us. You have great plans for us, Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. Again, Lord, you've created a wonderful a universe from the smallest of atoms to the expanse of the universe we thank you for that lord and we know lord that we sit somewhere in between that lord but we are not insignificant you love us lord and we thank you for that lord we thank you lord that you we are children of god we thank you lord that you come to us lord that you are by our side lord in all that we do and yes lord we know there are people out there who are wicked we know there are people out there who um uh keen to take advantage of us and exploit us 
And Lord, I was only looking at that yesterday, Lord, in our Bible studies, Lord, how we can be exploited. But we're, we're thankful, Lord, that you are with us by our side all the time. We are thankful, Lord, that you love us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you you come down by our side and you walk with us in our times of struggles, in our times of stri uh, strife. You are there with us, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are mighty. We thank you, Lord, that you are you are great. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the one that is in control of it all, Lord. Because when us human beings are in control, or we think we're in control, we mess it up big time. We mess it up big time. So we do need to be able to place these things into your hands. We do need to be able to, to leave things to you, Lord, because you are in control. And we thank you for that, Lord. Father, you are great and merciful Father, full of grace, full of mercy, full of love. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we wouldn't want to be any out of place but by your, with you by our side, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. So, Lord, I offer this prayer up to you, Lord, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Does anybody else want to open with prayers of praise for our Father Almighty? Yes, I will. Terry. Morning, Heavenly Father. Mm. Morning. Heavenly Father, come to you in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we can see from the news and everything going around us that the world is in a mess. But Lord, you are consistent. You are there and you are sovereign. There's nothing that takes you by surprise. There's nothing that happens to any one of us that you don't already know about it before it happens. And Lord, that's why we can trust you. And that's why we can believe you. And that's why we can know whatever happens to us, Lord, we're in your hands. Not just for today and tomorrow, but for the whole of eternity. And we praise your name, Lord. And we thank you for the cross that paid for us. Amen. Amen. Does anybody else want to, to pray over what we've been uh, what we've been um uh, talking about in or hearing about in Psalm 10. I mean, particularly at the moment, we're praising we're praising God, which is how I always like to start off with um, prayers, if we can, is is to praise God. So we've taken some of the endings of the psalm, to, um, which is more about praise and what He does for us. So if anybody wants to praise God uh, for all that He does, please feel free to open your mic. <clears throat> Okay, and we move on, and I see, I'm looking at verse 14, but you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take, take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless, and Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that you are the helper of the fatherless. Lord, yes, many times we are the victims but we take you take us in hand you are the father of us lord and circumstances and we will we will come to pray lord i'm sure later on about the circumstances of the world but lord we know now lord that um probably many of us online now are looking at this and thinking you know we are in we're in dire straits where is our help but you are there lord there are many times in the past lord and i thank you for this lord there's many times in the past where I've looked at situations and thinking, how the, how the heck am I going to get out of this? Where is the um, where is the ending of this? How are we going to get through this? But you help us, Lord. You help me through it. We th I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you have helped me through the difficult times. I thank you, Lord, that you have <clears throat> got me through those times. And when there seems like there's no light, all of a sudden we can see the end of the tunnel. We can see that light shining. And I thank you for that, Lord. You have done it for me so many, many times over. And I'm sure the people on this line, on this forum today, Lord, have seen the same. They have seen the same, that you, they've seen the light at the end of the tunnel. I know many times, Lord, you have been there for me. You have protected me. And it might have been people that have been trying to harm me, people who've been trying to exploit me. But you have been there for me, Lord, and you've seen me through. 
it might have been situations, Lord, that I've been in, that circumstances just made me in, be in a situation that is, is uncomfortable or dangerous or, or um, just stressful. Whichever way it might be, Lord, you've seen me through it, Lord. As I say, there doesn't always seem to be a light at the end of the tunnel, but all of a sudden it's there, Lord, because you've walked with me through the darkness you've walked with me through the valley of the shadow of death you've walked with me and i thank you for that lord you are an amazing god you are an amazing god because you've walked with me through those difficult times you are the father of the helpless and we can turn to you lord in our deepest and darkest troubles we can turn to you lord and i thank you lord you are amazing you are a wonderful god of which we could never do without lord we recognise you, Lord. We recognise all that you do, Lord. And we're thankful for that, Lord. But I thank you, Lord, for being with me in the darkest of times. Because, as I say, we, I've had many. But I am still blessed. And let's just remember, Lord, that despite what seems to be darkest times, there are many blessings, Lord, because you are a father of grace. You are the father who gives us, gives us things that we don't deserve. You are a father of mercy who protect us from the things, we, from the punishments we do deserve, but you protect us from that because you are merciful, Lord. And say so you are a father of grace because you give us the things that we, uh, give us things that um, we don't deserve, Lord. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for walking by our side. I thank you, Lord, that you are the father of the helpless and that you are, you are our mighty Lord. I thank you, Lord. Now I offer this prayer to you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Does anybody else want to pray over the fact that um, God is our father, the father of the helpless? Um, please open your mic and pray. Okay. We're going to have a look at one more, one more verse. And then we shall move on to some times of intercessions. If there are people who specifically want prayer, and I can I can see probably a couple of people online this morning who probably will want prayer, um, please feel free to um, let me know what those prayers are for. So please do that. But I'm gonna um, I'm gonna find one more um, line. And in verse four it says, "In the in his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God." Father, we see this many, many times over. There are so many people out in this world, Lord, who who do not want to know you. And we stand amazed because we know you, Lord, and we know the amazing benefits it has of having you walking by our sides. And we thank you for that, Lord. But you also call us to the Great Commission. You call us to go and make disciples of all nations, of which we we seek, to seek and set out to do, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, to help us to, to point the way to the wicked. You have done it many, many times over, and I know of many testimonies of people who have turned to you, Lord, in their deepest and darkest struggles, those who have exploited the wicked, those who have committed all sorts of heinous crimes of some sort or another. You have you ha have helped them, Lord, and I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you, you come on board and you bring people back to you. But we are called to do that too, Lord. We are called to be uh, the, your disciples and be the great commission that you need us to be, to be able to do your work here in the kingdom of, in, in the kingdom, uh, well, in, on earth, Lord, to bring the kingdom of heaven to you. So, Father, Help us, Lord, to be able to do that. Give us the strength to be able to do that because we are we are keen, we are um, desiring to be the best we can be for you. We want to be the best we can be for you. So, Father, just help us, Lord, to be that. Help us to be with you, Lord. And help us to be able to um, be them, that, them, the great evangelists that you want us to be, Lord, in however we do that, Lord because we do need to bring the wicked to you, Lord. We need to be able to spread the gospel to all four corners of the world, 
That is what we're, we're called to do. And we know, Lord, that uh, that is part of the preparation of the kingdom of earth coming down to heaven, that the gospel will, will be preached to, to every nation. So, Father, help us to be able to do that. Help us to be able to preach to every nation that you are... Um, uh, be able to preach to every nation that you are you are gl um, glorious lord you are glorious and that people need you in their lives lord they need to be pointed in the right direction and we are the people to do that we are the people to be able to point the wicked into the right direction give us boldness lord give us strength give us courage to be able to point people in the right direction so that they know you are the lord and when they know that you are the Lord, that they will have the love and the grace and the mercy that you can provide and the peace that you can provide, the peace that passes all understanding, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to help us, Lord, to be able to to be able to evangelize and be able to spread the word to the wicked, Lord, that you are good, that you are good. So, Lord, I offer this prayer to you, Lord, for strength and courage to be able to preach to the wicked that they should be able to turn to you so i ask this in the mighty name of your son jesus christ amen would anybody else like to pray over that particular bit okay i can see um i can see a couple of people on online um, ones who have actually disappeared now i'm sure at the end of the day their um uh, either signal's gone or they're um run out of data whichever it might be but we're grateful that they were online this morning um but there are some some people that i would like to pray for and if there's anybody else who needs specifically prayer then please do so um but father i want to place before oh edwin your your mic's open did you want to pray no, you, I'm I'm still traveling to. I'm organizing fundraising. You know, I'm in the road. You can see. I'm on the road traveling, so I want you to pray that uh, I get the the the, the bills so that the, 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 we can have the mother, the grandmother from the mortuary and the and the bari, barrier on on Friday next week. So pray for me. I'm traveling because I this a uh, prayer meeting and I I, I want to afford it to uh, just uh, uh, go away go away without having prayer to, today. So that's why I attended. Even if I have not participated, but I'm with you here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the road. Yeah, bless you, Edward. And to be honest with you, that was exactly the prayer that I was going to come up with. So um, first off. Um, because I have, well, I say I have you all in my mind, but um, I know you've been, it's been a difficult time for you. So, Father, be with Edwin and his wife, Kemi, um, in this um, time of, um, of grief, Lord. You know their, their sorrow. You know what their hearts are, are mourning for um, Kemi's grandmother, Lord, who's passed away um, last weekend, I think it was. Um, but you, Lord... Edwin and Kemi, they're great servants of yours seeking to do your work. So we ask you, Lord, firstly, to comfort them, to comfort them in their grief. And secondly, Lord, you know the expense of these um, funerals and medical costs. And you know, Lord, that um, they need to be met and that uh, they need to be met by the end of the week. So, Father, we ask you, Lord, to be the God, the provider for Edwin as well as he seeks to do your work, as he seeks to be, um, uh, to do the things that you want him to do, Lord. He is a great servant of yours, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, to be his provider, to be with him, Lord, and to be able to comfort them and also provide them, Lord. This is such a, a stressful time for them, Lord, because being able to, grief is one thing, but being able to have to sort out all these finances as well, to be able to pay for everything is, is um, a, a tremendous stress and struggle for anybody, Lord. So we ask, Lord, that you that you actually um, help him to to get through this, Lord. We prayed earlier on, Lord, about seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. 
So we ask you, Lord, that you are, you show him the light at the end of the tunnel, that things will happen, that um, bills will be met, Lord, but also that he is comforted by you, that he is comforted by you, that you walk with him by his side every single moment of the day, Lord. So be with him, Lord, and comfort him, Lord, in this particular time of, of struggle, in this particular time of need. So we ask this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would anybody else like to pray for Edwin? Yeah, I'll, I'll pray. How many prayer come to you, Jesus' precious name? We pray for our brother Edwin, who it seems is going for a difficult time financially and particularly with his death. We pray for him and all the family members and the friends that you will hold them up, Lord, that you will bless them and help them go through this difficult situation. Lord, we've all been through these situations and it's, it's not an easy time. It's heartbreaking and also difficult. But Lord, we just pray that you will strengthen him you, by your grace, Lord. You'll pour your grace on Edwin and all that are involved in this particular issue, Lord, of burial and everything else. And we thank you, Lord, that you're consistently with us. You never leave us through all those difficulties. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. I see Bishop Joseph is trying to join us at the moment. Um, let's see if I can get him in. Um, <clears throat> okay, again, I'd like to pray for John. I'm not sure where we are. We haven't talked this week, John, about your situation with your family. Um, I'm hoping and pray, well, continue to pray that that situation is resolved and that they can be able to come back from Uganda to you, Lord, uh, to you, <laughs> John. Um, in the, in the glory of our Lord, that they can come back to you. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that that situation is, well, it's held in your hands and we know you are in control. But we ask you, Lord, to again, to comfort John in these particularly difficult times where his family aren't with him. Just, Lord, be with John, Lord, but help this situation forward. And I'm sure at the end of the day, there's probably going to be twists and turns in this particular um, scenario, Lord, this particular saga, Lord, which um, nobody's quite expecting, but you are in control of it. We always know, Lord, that a difficult, the difficulties that um, we sometimes all have, that we don't sort of see the struggles and the strifes that we didn't see coming. But you are there for it, Lord. You are there to help, and you will actually um, get get us through it, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, that you do the same for for John. You do the same for John that we um, we do the same for John that sorry I'm just uh, yeah you do the same for John Lord that you get him through these these difficult times and you bring his family back to him to be by his side and we thank you Lord that um, John is um, so prepared to do your work and he's prepared to get in th involved in things he's prepared to get involved in this ministry. And we're, we're grateful for that, Lord. We've had some conversations this week about um, about your word. We've had um, conversations this week about being able to preach the biblical truths. So John is a great servant of yours, Lord. So we just place him into your hands, Lord, as we try to, um, as he tries to get his family back to him. We try to get his family back to him, Lord. We ask this, Lord, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And a welcome, Bishop Joseph. Sorry, go on, John. Yep. Yeah. I've just said amen. Thank you very much, Terry. Bless you. Um, I just welcome Bishop Joseph. Um, just so he knows, we've been praying over Psalm 10 this morning. We we thank God for how wonderful he is. And we thank God that he, he sits by our side in the times of difficulties in the times of strife that um, people bring on to us, Lord, uh, onto us. And we've also prayed over the fact that we want to be able to evangelize to the world. So Bishop Joseph, if there's anything there from um, from those three things that we've prayed over, over Psalm 10, then please feel free to open your mic and pray. Okay. 
Anybody else want to pray for John while we while we we're here on that particular one? Okay, we'll move on to other things then. Um, Lord, I pray also, Lord, we, we always pray for the world if we can. Uh, we know the situation in Ukraine, the war is still going on. Um, sometimes there seems to be what we hear through the media, some sort of softening of uh, President Putin's heart in wanting to give um, an amnesty over the um, Christian Orthodox uh, Christ, uh, Christmas time. We're never quite sure because because the media doesn't always tell us what to uh, everything either. Um, but we're never quite sure of whether that's true, whether President Putin's heart is is um, in the right place, if he has got some sympathy at all. Because we know at the end of the day, his hard heart has been hard. He has deceived. He has um, obviously create, uh, caused many, many atrocities in uh, Ukraine. And this is one of the countries probably that we can see our, um, that our Psalm 10 actually um, covers. That those are wicked people and that um, the likes of um, the Russian government, Putin, are wicked people, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to, to change their hearts. We ask you, Lord, for there to be peace in that region. And there are other areas of the world where there is conflict. We ask you, Lord, that there'll be peace in those regions, Lord, too. Ultimately, we look for world peace. And I've been thinking about it, Lord, because many people will ask the question, why does God allow suffering? But what does the world look like without suffering? The world will look like heaven without that suffering. Because we know, Lord, that when the kingdom of heaven comes to earth, Lord. There will be peace. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more tears. There will be no more sickness. So when the suffering ceases, Lord, heaven will be here, Lord. This is what heaven will look like with no suffering. There will be peace. And we're asking, Lord, for that peace to be able to, to come to this world now. We're asking, Lord, for the kingdom of heaven to come to this world so we can all be in, in peace that the wars end, that the strifes end. So Lord, we ask Lord, that the power of love does overcome the love of power, because then we will have peace. So please Lord, just bring peace to this world Lord, and let the suffering end, and let the heaven be heavens begin. So Lord, I ask this for the world, for world peace. And we ask this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Does anybody else want to pray for world peace as we as we um, are on that particular subject? In Jesus' name. Father, we give you glory. We come before you this morning. You say, may your name be praised, may your name be glorified for all that you have done. We have seen 2023. Lord, we gather together here this morning. Lord, we use this opportunity to ask God for the peace in the world. It is your peace that you want to work with. It is your peace that we need, oh God. We need your peace in our countries. We need our peace in Nigeria. We need that we are peace, oh God, Father. In London, we need your peace all over the world. We need your peace because it is only your peace, oh God, Father, that will bring deliverance. It is only your peace, oh God, Father, we make men to draw close to you. Lord, we ask oh God, for this peace to reign. Lord, restore peace in the world. And I believe that would be glorified in the life of the unbelievers. And then when they see your peace, oh God, Father, in us, oh God, 
They will draw close to serve you. They will draw close, oh God, Father. To ask, oh God, it is the source of this peace that we have. And we shall tell them about Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you because I know that you have answered our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm sorry for coming late. That's okay. Okay. Well, you're, wel you're welcome anyway, Bishop. So thank you for coming. Um, okay. I'll just. Um, uh, I just want to add to that uh, my prayers for Nigeria um, because I mean they are coming up to um, times of election. Um, so yes, we ask Lord that peace reigns in Nigeria, particularly Lord as they come up to their elections. We pray for the people of Nigeria. We pray for your wisdom to come upon that country from for those who are um, firstly for those who are voting. For those who've got to choose their president that they are actually using your wisdom to be able to be guided to the right vote and ultimately that um the person that is elected is of your choosing of your anointing lord that would be wonderful lord that they can be of your anointing and that they will be uh, of your wisdom too lord that they will be guided by you in the running of this country I mean, it is a country that suffers many divisions anyway, Lord. But we ask you, Lord, that um, they can have a president that can create unity in that country, that be able to um, create peace in that country and bring people people together. We do know, Lord, that in Nigeria they they suffer with um, uh, sort of almost um, uh, tribalism, or in the fact that um, tribe goes up against tribe sometime, Lord in uh, nigeria lord and we ask that to to cease we ask that um, for peace to reign in that country that people will come together during these elections peacefully to provide them with the the right leader the leader that is guided by you lord who is guided with through your wisdom through the holy spirit coming upon them lord that is all, what we would love to see so again, Lord, we just open that um, Nigeria up to you, Lord, for for prayer that they uh, have peace, Lord, through these particular elections, Lord. So, Lord, we ask this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Anybody else like to pray over that one, over Nigeria and their, their pre, uh, peace? Yeah, I'd like to pray over Nigeria. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' precious name, and we bring Nigeria to you. Lord, from what I see, and what I know from different people I speak to, and what I uh, understand about Nigeria, its greatest need, Lord, is for people to really know you. There are so many uh, prosperity preachers, that are just in it for the money. Lord, I'm yet to find one pastor in the UK with a private plane, never mind a jet. And yet Nigeria is full of pastors, so-called with private jets. Some have several. They live like pop stars, celebrities. They are not teaching your people about the real Jesus who walk from place to place. They're not teaching about your great apostles and prophets in the Bible that died and suffered and tortured because they belong to you. They're teaching that it's all about money. It's all about prophecy to get a word from a so-called man of God and their life will come right. Lord, they're not making disciples. Lord, we know there are good churches there and we know there are people that are consistently trying to teach your word. But from what we see in the media... Thank you. We see just a big mess. We see a big mess with the politics and with the poverty and so much. Lord, Nigeria needs your word and your hand upon it in a mighty way, Lord, to stop all this false teaching, to stop the corrupted politics, to stop the murder of Christians. Lord, it's one of the most difficult countries I believe in Africa and the only hope is for you Lord Jesus the Prince of Peace 
to change that nation. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else can do it. It's just your Holy Spirit that needs to touch the peace people of that nation. There's so many people there, and there's so much that's inconsistent with the Bible. There's so much wickedness even done in the name of the church. Lord, we pray for that nation, that will you bring a resolve to that nation, that you will touch it, Lord, and you will, more than anything else, raise up real, genuine disciples after yourselves, those willing to die for their stand for you, Lord. Please, Lord, touch that nation. Amen. Amen. Does anybody else want to pray for Nigeria before we move on? Because I see um, it's one or two other prayers that I'd like to to pray as well. Um, but anybody else like to pray for Nigeria, particularly with their elections coming up um, early this year? If anybody would like to pray for Nigeria, please do. Okay. Um, I see Pastor Nazir and Nazir, and I'm guessing that Nazir is with him as well, um, who are online, has, has come and joined us online this morning. Um, they're in Pakistan, and so it's great that we can have people from all over, um, you know, all over the nations to be able to come and join us, and that, that is wonderful. I'm, I'm so appreciative of that. So welcome, Pastor Nazir and Nazir. Um, I know this week, again, through conversations, that they are doing great work. Um, and Lord, I pray for them, for their work, Lord, what they are doing. Uh, they are, it's cold in Pakistan at the moment. And at the moment, they are trying to provide um, jackets and uh, warm, warm clothing for, for people out there. And so they're doing marvellous work. And I've seen, it's not just them, I've seen others as well who are doing the same, who are wanting to provide warm clothing for, for many people out there. And they're doing this because it is a great witness to you, Father. So, Lord, we ask you, Lord, we pray for you, Lord, pray to you, Lord, that they are able to, to have the resources to be able to do that, Lord, that you can help provide them with the resources to provide for others, to provide the clothing, to provide the food, to provide what they need to be able to do your work, Lord. We often say, Lord, that there are two ways of evangelizing. We can preach or we can show them your love. We can preach your love, or we can show them your love. Here uh, with Kunganesha Ministries, we try to do both. And here we see Pastor Nasir and, Pastor, and, and Nazia trying to do that, Lord. They are trying to show your love. They are trying to show your love so that they can bring people to you, Lord, because they have a heart for you, and they have a compassion for these people. And we thank you, Lord, for, for their heart. We thank you for what they do, Lord. But Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you help them in that work, that the things that they need to be able to, to show the love of you, Lord, you provide for them. So for the clothing that they need, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to provide. For the food that they need, we ask you to provide, Lord. And just, Lord, keep their heart strong as they do your work, Lord. So we ask this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Does anybody else want to pray for the work that Pastor Nasir and Nazia are doing in Pakistan or even Pakistan in general? There is a background noise here, but we can just listen. Let us pray. Let us be different to pray. I finally, Father, thank you for this opportunity that we have granted to us just as we have met, just to pray. How happy that you hear our prayers today. Help the brothers from the people working for you, God, that you praise them, give them the necessities that they may require to make that their work, their work is a God. Help them, give them good health, Jesus Christ. Can you provide the word they pray for? Can you answer their prayers? Can you help make people who they meet? Can you solve them their hearts so that they can hear your word, Jesus Christ? You are the one who can mold the, somebody the way you want, Jesus Christ. You are a potter, Jesus Christ. Thank you. We are also praying for everybody who is working for you, God. Praise, praise, praise them, Jesus Christ. Also praise us, all of us, Jesus Christ, because we are doing the work of, the work of you. 
and also we are waiting for the second coming to us Christ. I'm praying, believing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Ed. I'd like to pray actually for Pakistan. Please take your Mm -hmm. Okay, Father, we come to you about Pakistan and also the neighbouring country, India. Lord, I praise you and thank you for the opportunities that I have every week of preaching there. I thank you for the friendships there. And uh, we pray particularly for their protection, Lord, because the people I deal with, as you know, are in small communities and they're building churches and leading people to you. But it's very hard for them because of the finances and because of the other religious groups that are very against them, Lord. Um, particularly think of my friend who, who um, works at, late at night, and, but at the same time during the day, he's knocking on doors and preaching to people and he's running a church on Sunday. <clears throat> really pray for that particular man, Lord, that you will bless him and help him um, because he's been so consistent of trying to, help towards building your kingdom he's, he's carrying out the great commission lord the best way he possibly can and there are no so many others doing that lord and we pray for them we pray for their protection we pray for your grace and your blessings over their lives over the lives of their family that you keep them in good health and help them and possibly uh, every way you can lord with businesses with works with jobs lord so that they can have the finances for themselves and for their family and for the Great Commission. We just praise you, Lord, and bless you for all that you're doing in those nations. And we can ask that you increase the, the work in those nations, Lord, because we want to see people coming to you. We want to have brothers and sisters that are from Pakistan and in India. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Um, I also see on this line, I mean, we're coming towards the end of the time now because we, um, I've got to prepare for we John pray for people in Pakistan and people in India, and I have a um, some time with some people in India soon, um, so I've got to prepare for that in a minute. So we will be coming towards the end of our time here online, but I just want to pray particularly, personally for for the ministry that we're involved with, or we're trying to build the Kunganesha Ministries. I just want to pray for that Lord because I can see many people here online who are with us today who are, are, are involved in one way or another with that particular ministry building that ministry and as i said before there's there's two ways that we can we can evangelize we can preach the um the love and uh, joy and peace of christ or we can um, demonstrate it and we try to do both and that's what we're trying to attempt to do to build something that is actually preaching about the the love of christ but also showing the love of christ so, Father, we do ask that this ministry grows. We do ask, Lord, that it um, is successful for you, for your glory. Everything we do, Lord, is for your glory, to be able to actually show the world your glory. So, Lord, we, we just ask, Lord, that this ministry continues to grow, to continues to do your work, because that's what we are here to do, Lord. We are here to actually do your work. And we've mentioned the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations. And that's what we want to be able to do. So we ask, Lord, that through Kunganesha Ministries, this is our way of being able to do your work. This is our forum. This is our, um, our route, our path in order to be able to do your work. We all know, Lord, that we all have our own, our own ministries as well. There are ministries out there, Lord. But that's what we're about, is coming together as ministries, bringing other Christians, other Christian ministries, ministries, other churches together so that we're not asking that, that those, those works stop and just all cut, just be focused on Kunganesha ministries. We're asking them to bring what they have to this ministry in order to, in, in their experiences and the, the people that they know, that we can work together so we can evangelize together, we can teach together, we can preach together, we can go and do crusades together. But we can also look out for each other, Lord, that we can build some sort of finances, Lord, so that we can help the projects, that we can help the needs in Pakistan, we can help the needs in East Africa, <clears throat> we can help the needs in, um, uh, in other poor areas of the world, Lord, that we, in doing so, Lord, we show you, Lord, we shine a light on you, 
we shine the light on your glory, Lord, by doing what we do. So I thank you, Lord, for all the people here online today who help with this ministry and all those who are not online this morning who still help with their ministry. We are grateful for them all. So, Lord, I offer this ministry up to you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Does anybody else want to pray over that one before we close? Yes, let us pray. My Lord, Father, thank you for our ministry that you have put on the board. Thank you for the Kuganisha ministry because you have brought that vision through Brother Dale. And through that, we have tried to connect. We are trying to put many, ministry, many uh, ministry together, many denominations together, but mm -hmm. to spread your God, Jesus Christ. Through that, we have brought peace. Through that, we have brought love and closed the world and closed the denominations, Jesus Christ. And also, we are praying that you expand this ministry, Jesus Christ, and thank you for what you did. It's now legend that Jesus Christ, Jesus, can you bring more people, bring people with good intentions so that they can push on, they can support the ministry through prayer, so, so Jesus Christ, and through anything somebody can have Jesus so that we can fish on, so that they, we can move ahead. Bring for people in this ministry, bring peace, bring love, and also bring harmony. I'm praying, believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else want to pray or have something to pray over before we close? Okay. Well, it's been great to see you all. So people have been in and out on this. And <clears throat> I do know when I sort of look at the figures that people do watch this on Facebook, whether it be live or whether they watch the recording, they do watch this. So there are many people, even on Facebook, that we... We say thank you to for joining us this morning um and we we know lord that um these people are genuine servants of yours wanting to pray wanting to communicate with you lord and we thank you that um, even through facebook that um uh, people join us um but we thank you lord and i ask you to bless each and every one of you these people online and so bishop joseph edwin pastor nasir and nazia philip john and Robert, all these people yeah. online this morning who have joined us, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that um, they've come online. Okay. God bless you all. And we will do this. Yeah, we, we will see you all again, hopefully, this time next week. So God bless yes. you all. Take care. God bless.